Hey everyone, welcome back. For those of you who are new here, my name is Brittany. I'm a health coach and nutritionist, and my channel is all about helping people with IBS and digestive issues reduce their symptoms and improve their lives. And today we are gonna be making a gluten-free stuffing for your Thanksgiving dinner. I don't have a full Thanksgiving video on this channel, but um, we do have quite a few videos that you can reference while making your Thanksgiving dinner this year. Um, you know, we've got a whole roast chicken that you can kind of use to see how you want to season your turkey. Um, we have mashed potatoes on this channel. We can show you how to make gravy. Um, all these different um, things, I will link them below for you guys if you want to reference them. Um, but I really wanted to get a stuffing video out for you guys because stuffing can be kind of difficult to make um, from scratch because there are a lot of little steps. Um, that seem counterintuitive, but you'll see what I mean when I get into it. But it's so worth it, and it's really, really not even hard. Um, it does take a little bit of time though, and a little bit of preparation. So let me take you through that and show you exactly what I mean. So the first thing you need to do to make a delicious, crispy stuffing that's not soggy is to completely dry out your bread. Today we're gonna be using store-bought gluten-free bread. Uh, I do like this brand, Canyon Bakehouse. I don't love to eat this like with sandwiches. I mean, I'm sure you guys have tried like all the different gluten-free breads at the store and like they all kind of suck, right? Like they're very dry, which is actually gonna be really helpful and save us a lot of time when it comes to making our stuffing because we do have to dry out our bread in order for it to soak up all of the stock and the butter and all of the flavor that we're gonna be baking with it. We're gonna be drying out the rest of this bread. So if you were starting with like my homemade gluten-free bread, which is very moist on the inside, it's gonna take you longer to dry it out. But if you were just making one dish, like you were just bringing the stuffing and you wanted to make it like fully from scratch, go for it. You can totally do that. All right, so first, let's get this out of the package. Okay, so we're just gonna take our knife and try to make like one inch cubes. Okay, we're just gonna throw our, our bread on a, on a foil lined baking sheet, not greased. You'll notice a lot of stuffing recipes call for the bread to be hand torn. Um, you could totally do that. I like to cut it because it's quicker, it's easier, and you actually get more uniformity with your pieces, so they're gonna dry out at a more even rate. That's why I like to do it this way. Okay, we just wanna make sure that these are spread out evenly. And then we are going to bake this in the oven. Well, we're not baking it, but we are drying it out in the oven on a low temperature. So I'm gonna do 200 degrees and this is gonna take about an hour. Last year when I did this recipe for Thanksgiving, I used my dehydrator and I did it at 165 degrees for two hours. So you do have, you do have like options, um, different ways that you can dry out this bread. Some people choose to just cut their bread and then leave it out on the counter overnight and they feel that they live in a dry enough climate that it will dry the bread out enough. Um, I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna make sure when I put this in the oven to keep an eye on it because I don't want it to get too dry. We're not going full crouton. Like how you can kind of feel like the, the squishiness, like you can kind of feel the moisture in there. You want, you don't want that. You want it to be dry so that when we pour our mixture of, um, of like fat and broth on there, it's gonna soak it all up. It can't, it can't soak it up right now because there's so much moisture in here. So that's what we're trying to do, all right? And also make sure if you are using the homemade gluten-free bread, it is gonna take a little bit longer because like I said, my gluten-free bread recipe is pretty moist on the inside. Okay, so I actually decided that this is a little too crowded for my taste. Um, so I'm gonna put some of this bread onto a second baking sheet. And that is because if it's too crowded like this, when the moisture is evaporating, um, it's actually just gonna like create a lot of steam and that's not what we're looking for. Um, so yeah, let me, let me do that. Okay, yeah, so that's much better. So 
let's actually put that in the oven now. All right, so while that's drying out, we are going to prep our herbs, which is the other main ingredient, um, other than sausage, to our stuffing. These herbs are what's gonna give it all of that amazing, like stuffing, like Thanksgiving flavor. So our main ones today are gonna be celery and leek. Now, I know you guys know celery is not low FODMAP. You can actually have one third of a celery stock as a low FODMAP serving. We're gonna be using two celery stalks today because this recipe is for like eight to 10 people. So it's gonna to be totally fine. Um, and then leek is the other um, amazing ingredient in this recipe that is going to make it low FODMAP. And that is because we are using leek instead of onion. I cannot handle onions, which I'm sure a lot of you can't either. And leek is a really, really great substitute for that. If you guys haven't tried it yet, really buy it, buy yourself a leek, experiment it with it. Um, I like to use it any way I would use onions in a recipe. Um, I just, but I like to cook them down because um, they are a little bit more fibrous, but I'll show you guys what I mean about that. Um, you just want to make sure that you give your leeks a nice good wash because they can get like dirty in here. Um, so I'm going to wash these really quick and then we'll come back here and chop everything up. All right, so I'm just gonna trim the ends off this and then give it a bias cut, which I think is not necessary, but it makes it like feel a little more fancy and it's a holiday, so. So a bias cut is, we're basically just cutting on an angle. So one of the reasons I like to do this is because it actually gives your your veggie, whatever you're cutting, a little bit more surface area. And since we are going to cook this down, um, it's it gives us more opportunity to create flavor with a Maillard reaction. So that's why I like to do it that way, in addition to just being fancy. Same as with whatever you're cutting, you wanna make sure that you are cutting these down to similar size so that they cook evenly. And then I'm just gonna kind of like hold it together like this and um, and cut it. So I don't wanna use too much of this part in the middle. I think that does have a tendency to cause issues. Um, similar to the, um, to the end right here, just like a green onion. Um, you wanna stick more to like the leaves. So when I get down to this point, I'm just gonna cut it like this. So yeah, I'm just taking out this part right here. And I'm gonna cut off any parts right here that are a little bit too not green. So now we are going to set this aside and we are going to cook it down with, um, with our celery when we move over to that part of the recipe. I know this is quite a bit of leek, um, but it's, like I said, it is the star of this dish. Next, we are going to prep our soft herbs. So how celery and leek are a little bit more fibrous, that's why we're keeping them separate. So the celery is like far more fibrous than the leek. And then these are both more fibrous than our softer herbs like this thyme here. Um, parsley we're also gonna be using. And then I have some rosemary here. Um, this is young rosemary. It's very, um, it's very soft, very tender. Um, so we are gonna lump it in with our more tender herbs. If it was the rosemary that is like more, more fibrous, then I would lump it in in this category. And the reason why we do that is because we don't wanna overcook our soft herbs. We want them to still um, have a little bit of like texture and body to them. So again, with thyme, um, sometimes you get a plant that has more of like fibrous stems that, that are like more woody, but when you have ones that are tender like this, you can totally just eat that. Um, but if they are more fibrous, you wanna make sure to like pull the little thyme leaves off there, but I can't really do it with this one because it is so tender. So I'm just kinda, I'm just gonna give this a little, a little chop. So we just have like a handful. A 
All of these like Thanksgiving herbs, like sage especially, I love them. Next we have some parsley. I'm not gonna chop this down too much because I think one of the fun things about stuffing is like the interplay of textures. So leaving some herbs larger while some being smaller, I think that's fun. But we're just going for a handful of each of these herbs. If you can't find all of these herbs, use whatever you have access to. Um, I usually love to use fresh sage in this recipe, but I could not find any at the store. So we're gonna use dry sage today. We're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna make it work. Okay, so these ones I am gonna pick off. I'm gonna take out these stems, even though they're really not that fibrous, but. Okay, that's it for our fresh herbs. So now let's head over to our stovetop and cook up our sausage. All right guys, our, our bread is done drying out and I just wanted to show you guys like what we're talking about, the amount of dryness. I don't know, can you hear that? So yeah, we're like just under crouton. Um, that's how I would describe this. Next, we're going to brown the sausage in a medium stainless steel skillet over medium high heat with a teaspoon of garlic oil, dried sage, and a little fresh cracked pepper. Break up the sausage and mix all the ingredients, then flatten the sausage in the pan and let it brown for about five minutes undisturbed to help develop the color and flavor. Once that mired reaction has had a chance to occur, we're going to break up our sausage and give it a good stir and let it finish cooking through for a couple of minutes so we can render out all that delicious fat. Once that's finished cooking, we're going to remove it from our pan and set it aside to cool. Next, we're going to add one teaspoon of garlic oil, the celery, and half a teaspoon of salt to our pan. And again, let the underside brown undisturbed for about five minutes. We don't want to cook our celery completely because it's going to continue to cook in the oven and we don't want it to turn to mush. We're just looking to develop flavor. Once that has had a chance to brown, reduce the heat to medium and mix in the leek and a little more garlic oil and cook it down for a couple of minutes until the leek has softened a bit. Then add the fresh herbs with another teaspoon of garlic oil and about a quarter teaspoon of salt and toss everything together until the herbs are wilted but still bright green. Lastly, we're going to dump our leek and herb mixture into a large glass or metal mixing bowl and set it aside to cool. You don't want to add anything hot to plastic, side note. Next, to deglaze the pan, we're going to get it really hot over medium high heat and then add a quarter cup of gin and use a wooden spoon to help loosen all the brown bits cooked onto the bottom of the pan that are full of flavor. This is known as fond. Let the alcohol cook off completely for a couple of minutes. You'll know when it's done when that boozy smell goes away. This is going to add an extra layer of botanical flavor and depth to this dish. You could also use dry white wine instead or skip the alcohol altogether and just use broth. Once the alcohol has cooked off, lower the heat to medium and melt down a stick of butter. Once the butter has browned, turn off the flame and set aside. All right guys, we've got our dried bread here. We've got our sausage and celery and herb mixture. We've got our, our clarified herb butter, I guess. Um, sounds fancy. Um, we've got that and now it is time to assemble our stuffing. So we are gonna start by adding our sausage and herb mixture. Oh my God, this smells divine. Oh, while I'm assembling this, I've also preheated my oven to 450 degrees. And now we're going to add our butter. And that's why we, that's why we took so much time to dehydrate our bread because now it can soak up all this amazing fat. Okay, so now our last step is to mix two eggs with two cups of broth. I have some homemade bone broth that I had previously made. It was in the freezer, so I just pulled this out to defrost like yesterday. I love using bone broth because, again, it's another way to add collagen to this meal, um, which is great for our gut linings. It also has so much flavor and it's just like better than store-bought, honestly. And it's actually really hard to find a store-bought broth that doesn't have garlic and onion in it. So that's always why I make it my own. And um, I will link the video for you guys up above or down below, wherever. So if you guys don't have any bone broth, you can use this Foddy chicken soup base. 
I really love this for when I don't have bone broth made or chicken stock or anything like that. It, it has a really good flavor and it doesn't have any garlic and onion. But yeah, the collagen isn't like necessary to this dish, so you don't need to add the Vital Proteins collagen gelatin also um, to make like full substitute bone broth. Um, we just need the flavor on this one and the moisture. I'm using brown eggs today, but brown white doesn't really matter. Probably should have whisked these eggs first. <laughs> Yum. Okay, now that that is nice and frothy, we can start to add this to our mixture just until it gets hydrated. Um, we might not use all of this. Okay, so while I'm mixing this, I can see that we still have a few dry spots, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. So we're basically trying to scoop all the breadcrumbs from the bottom, or not breadcrumbs, but like bread pieces from the bottom up to the top so we can get some of the top pieces down to the bottom. So we make sure everything gets like equally coated. So yeah, I feel like we do have a little bit of liquid pooling at the bottom. So I'm not gonna add any more. I'm just gonna keep tossing this to make sure it gets nice and evenly coated. Okay, I think this is good. So now we are going to grease our baking dish. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of softened butter that I have here and um, use my fingers to spread it all around the dish. I know a lot of people like to use like paper towel or something to do that, but I just feel like the paper towel absorbs it. It's kind of silly. So I'm just gonna do that. I mean, our hands are in everything anyway. All right, now we're going to add our mixture. So you see everything down at the bottom of the bowl has had a chance to be absorbed. And this is an eight and a half by 11, I think, casserole dish. Now the last step is to dot little pieces of butter on here that is gonna make it like extra amazing, right? I know we've been using a lot of butter, but it's Thanksgiving, that's what you do. So I'm just gonna pinch off like little pieces. If you wanted to use like cold butter and like chop it, that'd probably be a better idea, but it's not what I did. Okay, I think that's enough butter for us. Um, actually, we have one more thing we're gonna but use butter on. So now we're gonna cover this with foil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the underside of foil with butter so that it doesn't stick. All right, so we're covering this with foil so that um, the inside of this has a chance to bake. We're gonna stick this into the oven and we're gonna bake it at 450 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes covered so that it has, the inside has a chance to cook. Then we're gonna take it off and we're gonna put it back in the oven for another 20 to 25 minutes so it can get nice and crispy and brown on the top. But I'll show you guys when we get there. All right, so let's just pop this in the oven. Place the casserole in the oven on the center rack and bake covered at 450 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until it's hot in the center. You can test this by sticking a knife in the center for a minute, then take it out and touch it to see if it's hot. Then remove the foil and bake uncovered for another 20 to 25 minutes until the top is brown and your casserole is bubbly. All right guys, here we have our gluten-free low FODMAP stuffing. I've dished up a piece for myself and I cannot wait to take a bite. Mm. So good. It's the it's exactly what you want for stuffing. It's like moist and at the bottom, but crispy on the top. You've got that interplay of textures. You've got this amazing flavor from the celery and the leek and all of the herbs in there. Got some sausage here. Mmm. So good. It's so nice and crispy on the bottom and on the sides and on the top. And it's got this little layer in the middle that's like moist and it's just like soaked up all of that flavor. 
so amazing. So you can see how nice and crispy this is. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. I know I am so grateful to be able to come into your homes and come into your lives like this and like have an effect on, on, your, on your life and your gut health and everything. It's been so nice reading the comments and um, from you guys and hearing how your symptoms have really improved from these recipes and it just like warms my heart. I'm so grateful that I'm like able to do that and, um, and help you guys out. So thank you so much. Um, thank you for supporting my channel and um, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please share this video with somebody who you know who has digestive issues. Um, it really helps to grow this channel and um, I really wanna help this message get to more people. That's my ultimate goal with this channel. Um, and thank you so much to all of my patron supporters. Uh, you guys have really, really helped me keep going and um, your support means so much to me. Thank you guys so much. And um, again, happy Thanksgiving. See you next time.